Okay, uh, hello everyone. Thank you for joining uh, this session. Uh, and uh, I want to tell you about, uh, I want to tell you, tell you a story. A story how we helped uh, one of our customers uh, to save time and save money. A little background. Uh, a big customer, uh, they are a consultancy firm, they have a lot of own products, and uh, each product runs uh, on a different AWS account for different uh, end customer. And uh, everything is uh, created on, uh, the inf infrastructure is created on AWS, and uh, it's a struggle to <coughs> keep everything uh, documented and to create another, another uh, environment for new customers because they were doing everything manually. So uh, how the initial account creation uh, process looked like? Uh, we had five different teams uh, required to, uh, to, to be there to create one single account. First, there was a team uh, managing the, uh, the AWS environment, so they had to create the account. But uh, then uh, there was another team uh, configuring all uh, external tools for uh, monitoring, for uh, log management. Then there was the networking department providing a CIDR and configuring a VPC and uh, maybe some tunnels. Then we had the security and uh, all integrations with uh, security tools like um, Prisma or Sentinel. And then finally, uh, the product team uh, creating resources uh, for the product. And uh, as, you, as you can see, uh, five different departments, uh, no single source of truth and no change history. They were just doing their job and uh, uh, the next team uh, jumps in doing their job and uh, finally we have something working but uh, nobody knows what happened and uh, uh, if you want to change anything, uh, we need to go back and do it manually. Uh, each team had uh, 48 hours for their task, so uh, for one single AWS account, uh, uh, it could be up to two weeks uh, for, uh, for, for this, so uh, yeah, it's, it, it sounds crazy. And uh, how, uh, how we approach this, uh, this problem? First of all, uh, we had to understand uh, why it's working like that and uh, what each team is uh, doing there. So uh, we had to interview them, uh, different time zones, uh, different teams, uh, uh, different tools uh, used by these teams. Uh, so it was a tough process, uh, but we had to gather all, uh, all information from them uh, to understand uh, how, how we can help them. And uh, of course, uh, the solution is not perfect, but uh, it, it was working. So uh, any changes, any improvements, uh, uh, we uh, had to be sure that uh, there will be no disruption in this process so they can still uh, deliver new, new projects and new products uh, when we are working on a better solution. And uh, what was the idea how to, how to do this? First of all, uh, we wanted to uh, introduce infrastructure as code, uh, to have everything in one place, as, uh, always up-to-date documentation of the infrastructure. And uh, we wanted to create reusable modules, because uh, each account is similar. Uh, there are similar resources on each account, just a different product uh, runs on, uh, on, on it. But uh, it's still the uh, same uh, work to do for each of them. And the uh, first, uh, first step was to prepare a configuration file, a single YAML configuration file uh, that uh, was um, used for, for a loop in Terraform to create this account. So there was one single YAML file with a definition of all accounts and uh, all details for these accounts. Uh, we didn't know uh, how this will look uh, when, we, uh, when we start using it, so we thought, hey, let's do this in a way that it's uh, easy to use uh, by a non-technical person. And uh, of course, if it's infrastructure as code, then we finally have a uh, error-proof kind of error solution. We have code review and merge requests, and we only uh, based on uh, things that is a master. And uh, of course, uh, there are different, uh, different tools integrated, and uh, we uh, wanted to automate uh, this integration process. Uh, a lot of external tools used, and uh, everything was integrated uh, manually. So each time, uh, each team had to log in to a tool and create the integration, then configure, uh, con con configure a role on, uh, on AWS and uh, provide uh, uh, some parameters. And uh, this was uh, an easy, uh, easy solution for that, because uh, we uh, knew 
we, we knew which tools are, uh, are being used right now and uh, how they configure it. Uh, we didn't know how to access these tools uh, remotely because uh, not all of them had APIs. Uh, uh, but uh, there was a solution for that uh, we discovered later. They created some kind of scripting for, for that uh, for themselves, but they were just not using it because they like manual process. And uh, that's when we uh, introduced uh, our, uh, our two pipelines. First of all, we uh, wanted to have a pipeline which is running on the organization management account. Uh, uh, it, uh, it has access to all uh, AWS accounts uh, in, within the organization. Uh, it creates, uh, creates the account, it creates initial uh, SSO uh, uh, groups and initial IAM roles for other tools uh, to use. And uh, there is also another pipeline based on another repository, uh, which runs uh, on a single AWS account. That way, we have the separation uh, uh, there, and uh, we can uh, use different tools for uh, each pipeline. So uh, for this organization pipeline, we decided to go with uh, AWS code pipeline just to keep this uh, uh, everything on AWS, uh, because uh, this uh, organization management account has access to all, all, all our other accounts, and uh, we don't want to create uh, IAM users with uh, long-living uh, access keys, uh, so that we need to uh, share this with some external tool. We want this to be secure. Uh, there's only one small team with uh, direct access to this account. Uh, however, for the product pipeline, uh, we can have this. Uh, we can have external uh, tools for uh, uh, for this automation, uh, like a Circle CI or something like that, and uh, we can provide this uh, access key there. Uh, the context, context is uh, limited to just this one account. And uh, yeah, as I, as I already said, uh, two different contexts and. Uh, uh, different repositories, so different teams working on the code for, uh, for each pipeline, uh, code review, merge request, and uh, uh, approval to, uh, to merge it back to master, and then the automation starts. And a uh, very important uh, thing here, principle of least privilege. Uh, uh, we wanted to be sure that uh, teams uh, have access uh, uh, to services and uh, resources that they really need access to. Uh, we don't want to uh, give a team uh, access to all uh, S3 buckets if they only work with uh, one or two of them. We don't want to give them admin access if uh, they are just uh, uh, checking logs or uh, doing uh, anything else other than creating and removing things. So uh, this is very, uh, very important. Uh, it's a very common uh, scenario where you give your developers admin access because they may need uh, this kind of access later and you don't want to be bothered. So yeah, it's not a good idea to give admin, uh, keep it uh, limited. And uh, of course, it, uh, there was a few responsibility. Different departments, different teams, uh, uh, they all had to do something and forget about it. Uh, but uh, if there is one team running uh, the whole solution after that, uh, hey, let's keep it in-house and uh, make it yours. So you build it, you run it, and uh, everything uh, is in hands of this uh, one team who owns uh, this uh, solution. Uh, so uh, they just need to modify uh, one single configuration file, and uh, that's it. Uh, uh, the, the work of all five departments is done by, by the automation. And uh, also, there were so many manual steps, uh, like I mentioned, the integrations with uh, other tools or, uh, uh, or the provisioning of, of these resources. Uh, most of it was done manually. Even if some uh, CloudFormation templates were used, they were uh, triggered manually. Uh, yeah, the, the solution, uh, the solution for, to, to that uh, was to, to have this Terraform template with reusable modules. Uh, and. Uh, it was uh, divided into two parts. Uh, first part uh, was um, uh, run on uh, uh, bo both both parts. Both parts were run from the organization management account, but the first part uh, was run directly on that account to uh, communicate with uh, organization's API to create the account uh, with IAM to uh, to create. Uh, uh, to, to create roles, etc., and then the other uh, the other part uh, was uh, assuming a role on uh, on this new account, and uh, it was running uh, in the context of this new account to create uh, roles for another tools and uh, uh, to create some network related uh, resources. 
Uh, after this uh, first uh, pipeline uh, finishes its work, uh, it triggers uh, the product-related pipeline, and uh, the product-related pipeline runs on this uh, product ac account. Uh, thanks to that, uh, everything is uh, automated, uh, and uh, it takes uh, a bit uh, sh shorter. Like it, now it's uh, one hour instead of two weeks. Uh, benefits, first of all, yeah, the automated pipeline, so uh, there is no place for a mistake, for human mistake. Uh, we have everything uh, defined in code, so you can see what's there, you can, uh, you can analyze it, and it's always the same. And uh, it's uh, always up-to-date documentation, because if you have infrastructure as code, this is your documentation of your, of your infrastructure. Uh, about the code reviews, uh, now uh, there is a single source of truth, it's the code, and uh, you can have these uh, code reviews to see if there is uh, anything bad with it or uh, it can be merged back to the master. Uh, clear responsibilities, we don't need all five departments, we have one team uh, working on a single configuration file, and uh, that's all. Better security. Uh, we have this automation on our management account, organization management account. Uh, teams don't need to uh, log in there to do anything manually. It runs on the code pipeline and uh, they don't need to log in there so they don't have access to other accounts. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's secure now. Yeah, and uh, the time saved, one hour instead of uh, two weeks. So this was a big benefit. Uh, uh, if you think of the, the, this client has a lot of new products, a lot of new customers, so uh, if they had to wait for uh, one account two weeks, uh, yeah, they were wasting time. And that's all from me. Thank you. Thanks very much, Mikhail. Very, uh, very informative. Um, where, in your mind, is it best for businesses to use a cloud native service or maybe start with like a vanilla image and put their own software on top of it for, for automating? Uh, okay, so if you are uh, talking about a company that is already in the cloud, uh, then uh, they can play with new things using, uh, using cloud native solutions. They can uh, fail fast. They can see if it's something good for, their, for them or not. Uh, and uh, if they are uh, moving from, uh, from on-prem to the cloud, uh, then it's, uh, it's uh, a lot easier to do lift and shift and using uh, just an image with your current, uh, uh, current setup and uh, deploy it in the cloud and uh, see how it works. Uh, and uh, it, 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 may, it, it will cost more than in uh, on-prem, but hey, that's the first, uh, first stage. And then you will have the cloud optimization uh, phase, and uh, then you can save something on that. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's how I see it. But do you feel like um, uh, doing that maybe on, on a single vendor is going to increase technical debt for a multi-cloud strategy? Uh, hmm. it's, a, it's a good question. Uh, there is... Uh, for me, it's that there is no good, good way uh, to uh, go cloud agnostic because if you are using any uh, solutions on one cloud, you are locked to that, uh, to that solution and it's not like you can uh, uh, copy and paste this code and run something on different cloud. You need to develop uh, uh, a bit of code for this different cloud, but uh, you can still uh, you can still use um, Kubernetes to, for, for for your uh, for your workloads. Uh, but still, uh, this Kubernetes is uh, is a service on one cloud or another. It's not like a copy paste and it works uh, in different place. So. Uh, yeah, if you are just focusing on one cloud, uh, then it will be a lot harder to move to another cloud or to uh, use another cloud uh, with your current solution. And we have open shift on top of that, muddy in the water <laughs> too, so thanks. Any other questions? Yes, thank you for this presentation, and I'm wondering about uh, different steps that you mentioned uh, at the beginning. Uh, some of them are pretty straightforward to think of automate them, like, uh, of course, the creation of ac the account itself. Mm -hmm. But let's speak about, uh, for example, the networking step or the security setup, which might be different mm -hmm. uh, depending on the application context on the, I don't know, the department when, where you are uh, speaking about networking, you may have different network topology, uh, the tuning can may be different. So how did you uh, tackle these this, uh, particular, particularities of 
of yeah, well, the Thank you for that question. Uh, it was very important to talk to teams and uh, ask how they are uh, using uh, different security tools or uh, why uh, they need to be involved in uh, creating the network if it's uh, isolated. And uh, uh, for the security tools, uh, we just uh, had to uh, allow these external tools to uh, be there on our account, so the role, uh, each, each, each tool already had AWS, own AWS account, so we just need to, uh, we just need to create a role and uh, allow this, uh, this tool to assume that role uh, to do some uh, scanning or maybe even a remediation. Uh, it was uh, the same for all. It was not, nothing uh, specific for a, for a product. It was uh, on the account level, uh, so just the role there and uh, the integration on the tool side, and it, this was enough. Uh, about networking, uh, the networking team was involved uh, because uh, they, uh, they knew how to calculate uh, ciders and that's all. The teams were just uh, grabbing a number and using it and uh, uh, that, that, that's how, the, how it worked. Uh, there was no uh, a connection to uh, another network, uh, this was isolated. Uh, the only thing uh, that uh, was uh, needed later, uh, we uh, had to use Transit Gateway and uh, create this connection to the different VPCs, so uh, the ciders had to be different, but in context of the whole platform and uh, not the whole company. So we had our, uh, our freedom there. We knew what, uh, what the addresses are available, and uh, the script can just grab another one and, uh, and just use it. So this, uh, this was the... Uh, uh, the integration that we had there, network integration that we had there. So there was not nothing, uh, not nothing specific, for, and we didn't have to uh, worry about uh, other networks. Thanks again, Mikhail. Very good, very good talk. Anything else? Any other questions before we move to some housekeeping around our World Cafe? Going once. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you.